Hi, everybody. I'm Ariana Love with the Liberty Beacon, and um, we have Luca Maino. Uh, this is our new broadcast called Exposing the Agenda. And today we have a very special guest, um, Dr. Frank Gregory Ford. And for those of you who don't know who Gregory is, he's best known for whistleblowing the CIA torture program. Uh, Gregory was renditioned and tortured for trying to stop the CIA torture at Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. Uh, he also exposed the weapons of mass destruction found in Iraq that were deposited there, not by Iraqis, but by the US government under the guise of, ant of anti-terrorism. And billions were made on these US weapons of mass destruction. We're gonna include links in the article. But this is not what we're here to talk about today. Um, we're actually, oh, but we, we will include the links and also um, the broadcast with TLB founder Roger Landry and Janice Karpinski um, for those who are wishing to learn more about this issue and I strongly recommend it. Uh, because what has been released so far is only the tip of the iceberg. But this broadcast in particular today is, um, we're gonna be focusing on Stanny Rock and a very, very serious issue. Uh, Gregory, Gregory is a chemical weapons expert as well as a medical doctor, and he is here with us today to discuss the chemical warfare which is taking place at Standing Rock. Um, the genocide is um, being whitewashed uh, by every um, leadership at Standing Rock and also the mainstream media. So we are gonna expose that Greg, it's an honor to have you with us. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for having me on your show, especially at this trying time. So we're, I'm going to, to give some background information to everyone about the Rosal poison. There are multiple chemical weapons being used at Standing Rock on water protectors, on the people, but perhaps the most deadly um, and serious issue is the rosal poison. Um, there were 40,000 tons of there were 40,000 tons of rosal poison illegally spread out over 5,400 acres of land. Um, and these were on two ranches to the north and the south of Standing Rock. They both directly border Standing Rock. Um, to the north it was Cannonball Ranch and to the south Myers Ranch. Uh, the rosal is used um, to kill prairie dogs, but it's usually placed at the entrance to the burrow. In this uh, situation, the Rosal was strategically and illegally laid out on the ground since the beginning of 2016, and it was spread across um, 5,400 acres of land. Um, the EPA report proved, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, report. They did an investigation and they released their report in January of 2017. So nobody knew about the rosal poison, but it was contaminating people. Um, the first time when the EPA discovered this was when uh, six bald eagle, eagles and bison were uh, found dead. And um, this is when the investigation began. That was back in April. That was also when the first water protector camp was established called Sacred Stone Camp. So it wasn't until January when the EPA released their report stating that 900 bison have been placed on quarantine. And immediately after this, Trump ordered that the EPA not to release any new information to the public about the investigation. So it is now sealed and closed. Um, five months later in December. So five months after these bald eagle and bison were discovered, DAPL, Dakota Access Pipeline, bought both of these two ranches. Um, the Rosal, now what we're getting at with this is that the Rosal is still on the ground a year, about a year later. It has not been cleaned up and the, and, um, you know, not only is it endangering, um, you know, endangered species like eagles, bison, and prairie dogs, but also it is now contaminating people and there are many water protectors who are sick. Two people have died from the rosal poisoning and there are others who are gravely ill. In fact, we're getting reports, I just got a report in tonight of another person that doesn't know what to do and she's extremely sick. Um, 
This has been covered up by every authoritative party involved at Standing Rock. Now, Greg, I know you have lots of information to share with us, so I'm going to give you the floor. All right. <clears throat> I, I have mixed emotions about what you're saying uh, is going on at Standing Rock, since my original experience was as, as an intelligence officer in Iraq. And I had actually set up a, a, a uh, internet uh, situation to check on certain types of weapons that were discovered, okay, that I was discovering. Mm. And the, those weapons that I had discovered, okay, were underground in a storage bunker. And here's what's applicable to Standing Rock, is that those weapons that I uncovered were VX, VX slash GF weapons. And those weapons actually were neurotoxins. That they were considered the greatest destructive weapon of mass destruction anywhere and invented at any time by mankind. Mm. Uh, short of nuclear blast, there's nothing more dangerous than VX. So I actually, at the, and this is part of my history, I actually reported the discovery of these weapons. I, I uh, had actually escorted the commander of the Iraqi fighter bomber wing to my command. We made the discovery. We actually obtained the documentation on those weapons. And big surprise, all right? I hope the Bush family's listening. Yes, those weapons of mass destruction were found with full documentation showing that those weapons were ordered by the Carlisle Group, and the Carlisle Group ordered those weapons to be assembled at Fort Rucker, Alabama, put on a transport, stored in Pine Bluffs, Arkansas, and then shipped, of all places, from the Houston Waterway, which is the hometown of the, of the Bushes, shipped on the USS Wabash and sent to Iraq, all right? Turk, uh, first Turkey, then Iraq. Uh, the thing that is so deadly about these weapons is that there is no antidote, all right? There is no antidote for what uh, our troops were exposed to. And that's when I saw the first fatalities. In the first Gulf War, uh, some of our troops were not warned that these weapons were on ground. They detonated one of the uh, storage facilities. And to show you the lethality of these weapons, Every single man in a brigade size, okay, what, 500 people, 500 soldiers are now dead, okay? They detonated this, this bunker that had weapons comparable to what I discovered. They're all now dead, okay? Our government hasn't said anything about it. They don't want to talk about it. And it turns out that there was only one person notified that these weapons were even there. And that was the famous Norman Schwarzkopf the commander of Desert Storm. So, so fast speed forward, okay, to my war in Iraq. And those weapons, yes, those weapons had been re replenished, resupplied by Dick Cheney. And I hope that son of a bitch is listening. All right. Yeah, that Dick Cheney. Uh, uh, he was responsible for selling those weapons. Yes, there's a complete photo shoot of him shaking the hand of Saddam Hussein, selling those weapons, okay, those VX weapons. Within five hours, those weapons were dropped on 200,000 Kurds, okay, Iraqi Kurds. Within six hours, there were 200,000 dead Iraqi Kurds, all right? The famous pictures of the mothers running with their babies in their arms and falling mid-step, yes, and dying right there. And then for good measure, those weapons were you know, what was left uh, and a new resupply from a fellow named Donald Rumsfeld, okay, another luminary from the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. And he refreshed the supply and those weapons then were dropped on the Iranians at, at, at uh, the island, okay, the Delta Islands. And those, those weapons killed over a million dead, excuse me, a, a million soldiers, Iranian soldiers. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, who cares 
if the Iranians have weapons of mass destruction? Who cares if they have nuclear weapons? I have not seen one American soldier ever killed by Iranian weapons of mass destruction, but boy, they put a weapon of mass destruction in our hands. That's a completely different story. So anyway, those, those weapons, and here's the connection to Standing Rock. After a, a little investigation, an investigation into what was going on and who sold those weapons, okay, to Saddam Hussein, it was uncovered in, in terms of Standing Rock that yes, these weapons really do work, okay? These weapons work very well, and why not go ahead and use them on the protesters? Make that, at Standing Rock, make that a no-go zone, okay? That's what Standing Rock has been turned into with this chemical warfare, and that's, a, that's exactly what it is, is chemical warfare, all right? Anyway, uh, uh, that area you cannot go into now. That, that, that poison, Rosal poison, was placed in an area where the prevailing winds, which is critical in this case, the prevailing winds were able to blow that, that poison and it was laid out in a sheet, a large uh, deposit sheet. And that, that those weapons, excuse me, I call them weapons for that very reason, is that's what they are, uh, was able to blow some deadly hemolytic, hemotoxic poison into that area and anybody that goes in that area should best have a respirator, all right? Every single person needs a respirator, all right? There's nothing safe about that area, and this was by, by design, mm -hmm. on order, okay? On order by our government, and obviously, if, if you have some real estate uh, snake oil salesman, like the president we now have, ordering the cover-up of the EPA findings, it's obviously a very toxic substance. And that's what we have here is people, victims, falling, injured with this material, and they have no place to go. No, from my reports that I've heard, none of those hospitals want to even examine these, these victims. Uh, I believe the source, Lily, okay, we won't use her last name, I saw a video of her very clearly exhibiting hemolytic uh, symptoms, hemolytic toxic symptoms, all right? Now, what I wanna know is forget, forget the protest, who is going to pay for this damage, all right? American citizens have been attacked with outlawed weapons, chemical weapons, who is going to pay for this, okay? That's the first question we should be asking. Second idea uh, that needs to be introduced is something called called uh, water riparian rights. As anybody that's been alive in the last 10 years would, would tell you, the fracking in those areas, those natural gas areas and oil exploration areas, yes. okay, so underground water has been destroyed, okay? And the only riparian rights that are left, okay, have mostly been purchased by the Bush family, okay? Hopefully I didn't stutter when I said that. The Bush family. They've done this in South America, and they've done it here, all right? So what we have is a situation where everyone that is stands up to protest to uh, protect their own rights in this country are being attacked by the National Guard, okay? And I'm an expert on how the National Guard behaves when they find their own interests at uh, being threatened, okay? I would, for example, I was uh, strapped to a stretcher when I refused to back down on war crimes charges of us torturing people at Abu Ghraib, I was strapped to a stretcher and tortured, all right? And MK Ultra drugs from the MK Ultra spy interrogation program of the CIA, okay, were used on me, all right? And I'm permanently damaged as a result, okay, of those drugs that were used on me. When I stood up to, to protect, those people that couldn't protect themselves are prisoners, all right? So it was the Bush family that set that whole business up. And yes, the CIA was there. And yes, I'm still suffering attacks from the CIA about this story. And, and, and as far as I'm, I'm concerned, the entire project, okay, should have been stopped 
years ago, all right? Looking at a map, I think anybody can tell that that pipeline could go either right or left, west or east, any way except going directly down through the reservation uh, of the Lakota Sioux, okay? And something happened, okay, with that decision, okay? There, there's plenty of, uh, last time I checked, Canada has plenty of ocean, okay, to refine this oil from the tar sands and ship it anywhere they want. No, this, this is a, an issue that is being used to justify the superhighways cutting the United States in half, virtually, the United States in half, and also this issue, okay, is th that they did not want to uh, go right or left, okay, in Canada, that would, that would not have entered any U.S. soil. They wanted to go directly through the Port of Houston in the Gulf, again, allowing the Bush family uh, to utilize uh, the pipeline for their refineries and becoming and making Houston a export capital of the world. Okay, imagine that the U.S. exporting oil. Okay, that's what they're after with all of this. So, yes, the whole thing is basically a run over the Native Americans over agreements that we made with them. Okay, and who cares if they're killed with lethal toxins? Obviously, our government doesn't care because right now, as I was just feeling some questions concerning the uh, uh, Agent Orange issue with Vietnam veterans, basically the government has decided they're just going to ignore that question, okay? They're going to ignore the fact that we've got soldiers, U.S. soldiers, dying hideous deaths, okay? Hideous deaths. You know, they're getting cancers that nobody can even think of a name for yet, mm -hmm. all right? So they're dropping like flies. And that was Agent Orange exposure. So what happens? I found out that the wheat fields, all the wheat produced in America uses Roundup to make sure that those crops all ripen at the same time. And then they've got, as a result, super weeds growing. So our wonderful politicians, our politicians that seem to be pimped out and owned completely by any special business interest, have turned around and authorized the use of Agent Orange. Agent Orange to be used on, on uh, the weeds, the super weeds that are growing. So, folks, you know, thanks to the Bush family, you are now getting a good dose of Roundup poison, and you are getting a good dose of Agent Orange on U.S. soil. This is U.S. soil, uh, so every loaf of bread you, you take, you can thank the Bush family for putting your life in danger and risking your life, all right? Now, those poor folks in Standing Rock, guess what? They have aerial poison being sprayed on them, something from pumice and, and the castor bean, okay? And they call it, normally they call it in the intelligence business, Racine, okay? And Racine does something like this. It will kill you with a microgram, okay? A microgram under your skin will kill you and leave no trace. That's how spies kill each other when they want to, by the way. They don't shoot each other like they do with James Bond, okay? They use extremely lethal toxins that are now being sprayed on, on, on the protesters, okay, in Standing Rock. So we have a situation here where uh, they're getting all kinds of poisons. They're attempting to be portrayed as a threat to national security. Imagine that, okay? Um, let me see, what was it? Over a hundred years ago, we, we stomped on the Native Americans. And by the way, I am half Native American myself. Okay, so I, I feel the example, okay, that's being set here. Uh, now, again, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant group, okay, that seems to manifest its behavior towards Native Americans, seem to be at their full zenith of power. They just, they make laws, and then when it's inconvenient or gets in some, some company's way, like we have here at Standing Rock, that's all it is, is just uh, one company wanting to make an enormous amount of money, and they're all connected. They get connected immediately to the, the ruling mafiosi family, 
okay, the Bush crime family, we should properly call them. And all of a sudden, all our laws get thrown out the window. Everything that we stand for gets thrown out the window. And we have a situation like this, okay? Now, I'll be the first to admit that the Native Americans themselves have a lot to blame you know, for this situation, all right? They haven't been united. They haven't carried on like they've been uni united. But the, the, that the bottom line is, is that this situation was provoked by the oil interests, okay? And, and as you can see, the court decisions that are being handed down are tailor-made for a corporate oil corporation, we'll call it their wet dream, okay? If they want something, if they want people removed, if they want people assassinated, killed, murdered, they just go to the courts, okay? No, no, and the courts have been completely compliant in this whole situation. So I, does that about cover it, Ariana, in terms of understanding what is going on there, in terms of the victims? That's my most important concern right here is the victims. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would just add a couple things about the, the chemical warfare. Okay, the rosal is one of the main poisons, but also, like you mentioned, castor pumice. This is causing the dapple cough and yeah. glass lungs, it's called. Um, they've been spraying, uh, it's been sprayed over the water protectors, and this has been going on for months, um, from airplanes, uh, usually at night, airplanes and helicopters, mostly at night when no one can see that, that they're actually spraying. And they're, they're depositing, they're spraying it right over the camps and they would just fly for hours over the camps. Um, they have, there's video footage and also we have still pictures that we're gonna insert in this, in this broadcast. Um, they got pictures, the water protectors got, were able to photograph the, the serial number on the, the um, flying crafts because it's helicopters and airplanes and the serial serial number was obscured and you know which means that basically that's government right absolutely yeah they're aerosolizing air delivery these weapons these chemical weapons don't call them anything but what they are you know they they like to put a nice name on it and they'll call it a rodent side okay or a mammal side, or something mm. along these lines. It's ridiculous. The, the, these weapons are extremely dangerous. And wasn't there something about protecting bald eagles? Okay, Amer America's symbol. Okay, well, that doesn't seem to concern these people too much. Bald eagles are being killed. They're breathing the particles in, and they're having, having their internal nasal passages destroyed. They're, they're bleeding to death, these bald eagles. And then we'll add to that list, buffalo. Isn't that another American symbol? Okay, buffalo. All right, so what is gonna happen with this, was it a 50 acre area that was sprayed very carefully and, and, deposit, and the chemicals were deposited on this area very carefully to where the prevailing winds would cover the protesters, okay? What's going to happen to them? From what I understand, there's no medical care allowed for them. They won't even, you know, the, the powers that be in terms of medicine there won't even take blood samples and, you know, and, and keep them, all right, to show the forensic evidence being used, okay, against these, against these protesters, all right? What, who speaks for them at this point? Obviously, obviously not the American government, okay, and isn't, isn't there an issue about sovereignty, Mm -hmm. On a sovereign nation, from what I understand, they are a sovereign nation. So what we have here is that one so uh, sovereign nation, the United States, attacking another sovereign nation of the Lakota Sioux, okay? So I don't know what to say about all of this. It's ridiculous, and what amazes me is the American people are sitting still while the powers that be just you know, run rampant over a long-established uh, relationship of two, of two separate groups of people, minorities, okay? What is, tell me, tell me, I'd like to understand, I'd love to have anybody call in and say, or send a message in, what that amounts to, is that these people are being wiped out using lethal drugs against, you know, and they're also something about Geneva Conventions, so these type of weapons used, hemolytic poisons used on people, okay? We'll just, we'll just tell the whole world 
our oil companies will tell the whole world, just drop dead and we'll, and we'll go ahead and kill all our minorities when we feel like it or when they become inconvenient. That's what I'm seeing here. Uh, you know, and and uh, as I can pers personally attest to is in Iraq, okay, when I followed the rules of the Geneva Convention and our own rules of combat, okay, you know, I think everybody understands what happened to me. Okay, great, no problem. We'll take a U.S. citizen, rendition him, fly him out, torture him in route, even when Germany, I was being flown to Germany, Germany contacted the airplane and demanded to know if there was anybody on board being held against their will, me, okay. And th the government said, no, no, there's nobody. Ha <laughs> ha, laugh, laugh, big joke. Uh, he's not complaining because I was almost comatose, all right, with the drugs that I was given. But when I got, when I got to Germany, I had three or four people ask me, okay, high-ranking high people, how I left. And then they, 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 they acted like they were just embarrassed, like they didn't even want to deal with this problem, okay? And then, of course, I notified the U.S. Attorney's Office. The U.S. Attorney's Office turned out to be nothing but an apologist, and, and their sole function appears to be to prevent the U.S. government from having to obey their own laws, okay? So, yes, and by the way, for your listeners, Ariana, okay, uh, they can actually look up my case. They can look it up online. Okay, it's my name against the commanding officers, uh, least of which was the very dangerous, very infamous Colonel Pappas, who set up the whole program, the whole program of black operations torture, okay, at Abu Ghraib prison. Okay, Abu Ghraib prison. He's one of the defendants in my case. And that is, I'll give you the name and number, you know, and which is, by the way, going to the Supreme Court very shortly. It's Ford, my last name, Ford, Frank Gregory Ford, versus the entire command of the Abu Ghraib prison. It was interesting. We got bumped off by Zoom, and then we lost all sound on Gregory, but we managed to um, get us all back on. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to shift focus to, um, back to the, the water protectors who are sick. There are some people who are gravely, gravely ill right now. Um, and because, well, let's, we're going to show a clip. It's about 10 minutes. And this is of a water protector, a very brave girl, named, woman named Lily. We're just going to use her, her first name. And she has, the reason we're going to show the entire video um, is because there's lots of vital information in there. And um, this is also for people who are sick right now you're gonna know what to do after you see this. Oh, relatives. Um, I am sorry to go live at this moment when there are really important live feeds coming out from camp. But I wanted to share this feed before I go and pick my children up. So, anyway, um, I needed to talk to you about Rosal at camp, the use of castor pelmis at camp. Um, these are some of the things that the crop dusters were spraying on us. Um, we didn't know until just the late the 23rd of this month um, about the Rosal when an advisory was issued um, and people were able to go and get tested. Um, Dallas Goldtooth and Linda Black Elk are lying and saying that it's not a concern, it's not an issue. Um, I would like to tell you firsthand that my blood has tested positive for Rosal, as have others. Um, I have documentation that I will provide on my Facebook, um, but first I have to black out some of the things. Um, I also have to go pick it up from my doctor's office and I haven't felt well enough to get that done yet today. Um, that proved that this is indeed true. Um, I will be blacking out parts of it though because I am being trolled by people pretending to be part of the Water Protector Legal Council. Um, there's one person that 
I possibly trust from that legal counsel, otherwise it is heavily infiltrated by DAPL. They're not protecting water protectors, they're not supporting them in court. They claim to have no funding, and this is why they can't. Um, however, they received so many donations and so much funding, so it really doesn't make sense. Um, and if you question them, most of the time they just get extremely rude and defensive. Um, and are not able to answer questions. So anyway, that aside, Roswell poisoning is very dangerous. Everyone who's been at camp needs to be tested. Um, you can get a blood test done. You can get a hair follicle test done. I was first hospitalized in November after I went to Standing Rock. Um, they thought that I had pneumonia because of the chest x-rays. It was later confirmed that um, with a sputum culture that I did not, in fact, have pneumonia. This is why two months of antibiotics did not help. Um, I had toxins in my blood, but they didn't know what to test for at the time, and so they were unable to test for anything. When I went back, um, I went back to camp in December, and when I returned home and went to the doctor and had found out about the Rosal, I asked them to test me for that, and it came up positive. Um, the other thing is the castor pomus has fiberglass in it. It is a insecticide pesticide that they're spraying us with. It has microscopic um, pieces of fiberglass in it, which um, is causing people to have what is called glass lung. It can appear like pneumonia. Um, until further testing is done, but it is not pneumonia and antibiotics do not help with it. Um, now that I know what it is, I am hopeful to be able to get treatment for it. Um, one of the issues that I am finding is it's very hard, at least in my state, to find someone who will do a hair follicle test. So I am still seeking that out. Um, these are just a few of the things that are known that they were spraying on us with their crop dusters. And several people have tested positive for both. There's another thing, um, I'll post it on my Facebook. Um, it starts with a T. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, and so I'm not even going to attempt it. Um. <coughs> <coughs> but I am going to post it for everyone so that people can get tested for it. This is very important um, and we need to get this information out. But most of the water protectors that like, camp know about this information but a lot of people outside of camp do not and there's a lot of lies going around saying that it is not true that Rosal was never used even though we have records from the EPA. We have um, we have the health advisory that was issued, um, about the Rosal, so we know that, in fact, that is true, and like I said, I can prove to you with my lab results from my blood culture, it is true. Um, the other thing that we need to know besides getting tested is anyone who had collected soil samples, um, water samples, anything like that, um, please do not give your information to the Water Protector Legal Council. But instead, we need to find a public forum where we can share it that is not Facebook. Uh, water Protector's Facebooks are being trolled constantly um, by the Water Protector Legal Council, and so that's not a forum that we want to share all this information in. Um, especially public health records, or our doctor's health records. Um, and so, anyway, I'll be happy to post my phone number and people can signal me information if they want. Um, anyway, I'm sorry that my feet is so slow, my breathing is not significantly great today. Um, but these are very important health concerns. People need to understand that they are real, that Linda Black Elk, I don't know why she's lying about this, um, as the head of the, uh, the medic council, and Alice Goldtooth, um, 
I'm not sure what his game is either. He's already lied about the crop dusters a long time ago, and now he's lying about Rosal. <laughs> the other issue is that they are saying that um, the Rosal, they're blaming it on one farmer named Meyer, saying that he dumped 40,000 pounds of it. Um, I do not believe this to be true because it's extremely restricted use and illegal in most states. Um, and so we need anyone, anonymous or anyone else, who can try to find the paper trail linking the Rosal to who actually sprayed it and used it on us because I don't believe that one farmer could obtain that much Rosal without a red flag being issued and without being told no because there's no reason that one farmer would need that much Rosal. Um, he also sold his lands to Dapple. So it is unclear to me as to whether he worked for Dapple or not. Um, Meyer and Indeen also have video footage of the crop dusters spraying us of the crop dusters flying ahead overnight um, without their lights on, flying very low against um, federal aviation re uh, regulations because it's a federal no-fly zone. Um, so anyway, I'm going to end this video soon, but I just was hoping that you would please share this uh, with people so that they can get tested, so that they know that it's not just a rumor, it's not a hoax. There are actually people who are extremely sick. Um, I will be fine. We can treat it with um, vitamin K. The vitamin K um, pills have a one uh, sort of next to the K, um, but down a little bit in the corner. Um, that helps treat it. Um, we also have to be really cognizant and aware of um, internal bleeding, which I have experienced. Um, people coughing up blood. Um, glass lung is also a significant risk that people need to be aware of um, that is causing what we have been calling the dapple cough. It does not go away with antibiotics, and so Please just encourage people to share this video, people to get tested for these things, um, and to please be extremely careful who they trust with their medical records. I've been asked several times to sign away all of my medical records to the Water Protector Legal Counsel. Um, I do not trust them, so I won't do this. A lot of people believe that this is a lie, this is not true. Um, believe what you want, believe what you will. Like I said, I'll post the evidence, but I don't think it's really um, something that's so unbelievable when you look at the issues of smallpox blankets and Native Americans and our history, our government's history, of the way that they have treated them um, and their allies and genocide that they have perpetuated against them. So um, with that, I will just tell you, um, Chumagwetch. Thank you so much in advance for sharing this. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I appreciate you. I love all of you. Um, thank you. Mitaki Ayawasan. Okay. So, as everyone can see, um, Lily is very sick. And for a long time, she didn't know what was wrong with her. She didn't know... Um, the doctors didn't know what to test for. They gave her antibiotics that didn't work. Um, and it's, it's a very serious, the reason why, the reason why she didn't know is because basically this has been covered up and we're going to explain more about that in a little bit. But Gregory, why don't you explain to us how serious these chemical, um, weapons, um, are and how, how they w are working in the body and what people need to hear. Okay. Uh, yes. And in these particular cases, uh, we're dealing with something called a hemotoxic agent or hemolytic agent. Basically, what's going on here is that these agents are like rattlesnake venom. Okay. They destroy the blood cells and they destroy the tissue. Uh, the, the most sinister thing here is that after you get a, the initial dose, the initial exposure, uh, what happens is uh, the, the, uh, the sinus tissues and the lung tissues and the throat tissues all begin to bleed, all right? That's what I see 
is extreme anemia and blood loss in all of these cases. Uh, and, and the symptoms, okay, usually, which is the most dangerous thing about this, is the symptoms come after the initial exposure, okay? It isn't just you get exposed and then you have these symptoms and then you go in and get treated. No, you, you, you feel like you have the flu and then something just doesn't happen, just doesn't go right. And then you go in, by the time you get into the doctor, guess what? The damage is already in progress, already cascading is the proper medical term for this. It's a cascading reaction. And yes, it does mimic racine poisoning in every sense of the word. Racine poisoning from the castor bean, all right? Uh, as I said, that's how spies kill each other, uh, is racine poisoning. Uh, so in this case, if you notice, if you notice a, a little weakness, if you notice uh, a nausea, if your symptom, if you're, first of all, if you start bleeding in the nose, you, you, you uh, go to blow your nose and, and you get blood, that's, that's the first uh, agreement that you can actually have in terms of understanding this condition. And that's what you need to tell your physician. And I, when I say don't hesitate to get to your physician, I mean don't hesitate one minute, all right? This, and the, and tell, tell your physician that you suspect racine poisoning. It's being dropped in an aerosolized fashion. Aerosol means basically airborne, all right? It's an airborne type condition. Uh, and that is the, appears to be the method that is killing the bald eagles, all right? The bald eagles don't eat anything. They just breathe some of the dust and powder and they fall over dead, okay? Uh, in, in, what I'm recommending, if you suspect this, call 911, all right? Just call 911, demand, demand an ambulance take you to a hospital. Tell them that you've been to the site, okay, where this uh, chemical exposure is happening, and demand treatment. We, in these days of Obamacare, guess what? You might as well get treated while you can, because I'll tell you, this president we have now, he isn't going to make it easy to get any kind of treatment because he doesn't want you around to complain about it. All right? So go take care, uh, take advantage of Obamacare and get treated immediately. All right? Vitamin K seems to be the only, only uh, preventative uh, 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 standard that you can use, okay, that's consistent in this. It comes from green leafy vegetables. But the problem is, is that you need to do something. What I'm seeing are people, they have all these symptoms, you know, bloody noses, they're getting anemic, they can barely move, they can barely talk, they can barely think, and what happens then is they die. That's what will happen to you if you're exposed to this. You will die, all right? Uh, in, in terms of proceeding to the site, no one should go near this site. As far as I'm concerned, everybody should be uh, in a, a hazmat suit in a completely secure hazmat suit. That's no way to carry on a protest, folks. All it takes is a microgram a micro, or a micro droplet of this stuff or a microgram is about the size of a fog particle, okay? Uh, my, the droplets in fog, that is a micro droplet, okay? That's all it takes for you to inhale for this thing to kill you, okay? Mm -hmm. To initiate the cascading effect of, of the fatal effect that's all it takes to kill you. Don't go near the thing. That's my recommendation. Don't go near the site, all right? And get the word out is that, yes, the American government is attempting to kill every single protester there. They've gotten away with it so far. It, look how many people they killed in Iraq. What, you know, Ar Iranians and Kurds? That We're talking almost, a, almost 2 million people that they killed, the U.S. government killed, was responsible for it they're not gonna hesitate for a few protesters. So please, please go home, do that. Stay away from this site, all right? And if for some reason you have to go to this site, wear a respirator, by all means. And it's interesting right now, okay, there's, there's a couple of things I wanna mention that you've mentioned to me before that I think is really important. And that is that the, um, the rosal that's on the ground, the reason why it's airborne is because it's 
as you explained, it when it gets certain elements, so first moisture, like rain or snow, and then the sunlight comes, and then the gassy fumes go up into the air, and the wind carries it. And of course, these two ranches are sandwiching, you know, from the north and the south, they sandwich standing rock right in the middle. So it's pretty clear that, that you know, the whole site is, you know, if, if 900 bison have to be quarantined, the whole site needs to be quarantined, and this rosal needs to be cleaned up. And according to the EPA, it is the responsibility of DAPL to clean that rosal up, and they haven't done it. I mean, obviously, intentionally. So, so um, but yes, uh, there's something else. The mace that was being sprayed on people, it is also um, containing fiberglass and possibly chemical uh, weapons. So there's, people have tested positive for other things. Um, I've seen medical report. Um, they, the people who have started speaking out, they've received death threats. Um, Lily received a death threat after she released that video. Um, her, they threatened her chill, to kill her children. She's terror. She's scared. Um, that's why I knew we had to get this word out as soon as possible. Because once the cat's out of the bag, they're going to be a bit safer. They're not going to be so much of a target because it's already out. Um, Luca, if you don't mind, I want to jump down. I want to jump down um, to the uh, leadership um, because. And then we can go back to the other notes, if that's all right. Because Lily brought up, she dropped some names. And I would like to, um, to um, back her up. Um, so beware of the deceptive leaders. That's where I want to um, I want to mention this. Um, and, you know, Gregory actually told me to focus only on the victims and the seriousness of this, and I was going to do that, but there are some leaders who are sabotaging and putting people's lives at risk by trying to cover this up, and I think they need, and, and Lily has, you know, started to, started to reveal that, so I want to back her up, because in my investigation, I've also discovered the same things about these people and more. Um, beware of deceptive leaders. Dallas Goldtooth, the Dakota, um, he is the head of Indigenous Environmental Network, and Linda Black Elk, the head of the Medic Healer Council, are both lying about the rosal poison, claiming it's not in the air, it's Standing Rock. Now, um, Dallas Goldtooth also lied about the uh, crop spraying, the spraying of castor pumice. Um, so he's been lying for quite a while. Why are they doing this is a very big question. Um, Linda Black Elk, okay, I called the um, Standing Rock uh, Indian uh, Hospital and I asked them if they would answer some questions. They told me no because they're getting federal funding. So they referred me over to the Medic Healer Council and I never received, I, I talked to somebody from there, sent some some questions out to them in an email and never received a response. So that tells me right there that these organizations are in cahoots with each other. Um, so it became very clear to me that the tribal leadership is bought off. And Luca, you had something to say. Yeah, because um, first of all, I just want, want to say hello to Greg and, and thank you so much for being with us on this very important broadcast. Um, it's an honor to be with you and you too, Ariana. Um, there's, there's, there's proof all over the place. Um, you know, the tribal funds that are being used uh, by the leaders for personal use, uh, for, to provide for themselves, for their family, for their friends, at the exclusion of using funds to meet the needs of the people they're supposed to be, you know, serving, which is the tribe. Uh, these are wasishu, that's what they're called. They're the ones who take the best meat for themselves, the apples. Uh, the higher up you go in the echelon of tribal government, the more deceptive it gets. You find people that are ready and willing to put other people's lives at risk for their own personal gain. And I have to, I have to be very clear on this, okay? Um, the ones who suffer the most at the mercy of or at the hands of today's tribal leadership are the traditional elders. Um, ancient tradition is what threatens the government most because government wants tribal people to be all assimilated or exterminated. It's that simple. Um, 
Th this is how many elders feel in many tribes across Canada and the United States. Many elders are, they're afraid. They, they're, they're in fear of speaking up because uh, they fear of speaking freely of, of tribal corruption simply because they see other people being p severely punished, denied funds, denied services, denied basic support. And, um, you know, there, so some of them are, are, are even subject to more, even more severe retribution. So um, this is being evidenced in the past by those people who, who have attempted to address this corruption. Um, and I know quite a few of them. Those who have spoken out, they've lost their housing, they've lost financial support, they've lost their, you know, their families were targeted, as we see with Lily. Um, others might even connect from them for, for fear of being targeted themselves. When individuals are attacked, okay, this is really important, it makes it really difficult for the tribal people to come together to address the problem of corruption of the few in power. It's only when the tribal people can come together to address this corruption that they're able to take away the positions of the people in power so that they can be replaced with people that are properly going to serve the tribe as they're supposed to. Um, and for all the people that played this game of divide and conquer, um, who think that you have to be native to, to speak about issues like this, we have to really remember the dilemma, the most important dilemma, which is water. And that's the reason why this has been happening in the first place. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what your background is. Um, once the water is destroyed, there's no, there's no more life. We need life. We need water to survive. And if we don't have the water, there's no more life. And that's it. You can't bargain with that. You can't barter with that. And all the oil in the world is not going to bring it back. So, Ariana, um, I, I really wanted to stress that. It's really important. Thank you, Luca. And um, so, yes, the tribal leadership, uh, Standing Rock Sioux tribal leadership, is, has lied about the Rosal. Um, they're putting people's lives at risk. And I know that by calling them out by name in this broadcast, it could potentially put their lives at risk. But, you know, there's water protectors right now. There's people who put their lives on the line and they um, are in danger of losing their lives. There's people who are very, very sick. So to cover something like this up is risking people's lives. It's a shame. It's criminal. And these people will be held accountable because money has a paper trail and they will be audited. More than 300 tribes have sent money to the Sioux Tribal Council. They sent supplies and they sent people. Um, the elders of other tribes, tribes were gravely disrespected and have said that they will never answer a call for help from the Sioux Tribal Council again. We both heard from reputable sources that the mail and vital supplies and donations destined for Standing Rock were redirected by the order of Chairman Dave Archambault to a warehouse and left there and not distributed to the destination. What happened to this, we don't know. Um, and these were vital supplies that would keep people warm and you know, sustained during the harshest times of the winter. Now, another name we gotta drop is Chase Iron Eyes. His real name is Chase Little. He has recently risen up as a leader some people are even calling him a spiritual leader. Well, the man is a lawyer. I've never known lawyers to be spiritual, just saying, right? And he has been involved in shady business deals, land, shady land deal, where people came away from that feeling screwed, and also womanizing. And this is coming from many reports. So who is this guy? Okay, he, he, he has founded the Lakota Law Project, and he's now fundraising. Okay, LaDonna Bravebull, who started Sacred Stone Camp on her private property at Stanny Rock, she has allowed known infiltrators into her camp, like Johnny Dangers, who works for Pinkerton Securities, which is the very company that used attack dogs on them, on the water protectors. Also, Rob Wilson, who might actually be Johnny Dangers, at least their IP addresses matched when they were supposedly in different states. So Chase, Dallas Goldtooth, Chase, uh, uh, Chase Little, and Dallas Goldtooth, or Chase Iron Eyes, we should say, um, that's what he's going by now, uh, Dallas Goldtooth and Chairman Dave 
Archambault made an appearance on Democracy Now! yesterday, on Thursday. Um, not any one of these sellouts mentioned anything about the Rosal poison, which by now could be spread everywhere over Standing Rock. Chairman Dave Archibald has allowed police onto the tribal pro tribal uh, onto the onto the tribal property and also onto private property, allowing for brutal abductions of water protectors. Under international law, by the way, these are not arrests. They are technically termed abductions because it is illegal to touch anybody on that land who, and don't believe the mainstream media when they call the, this, this arrests. It's, it's completely a wrong term. So I had to go over to back up everything that Lily, Lily said in her video because um, she didn't want people attacking her for being the one to come out and say it. And the truth is, is that I found the exact same thing in my investigation. And so, you know, why not expose the corruption where it is? I mean, it, you know, we'd be doing people favors. Okay. Um, so that again, you know, the, it, these, these three people um, appeared on Democracy Now! yesterday. They didn't mention a thing about the Rosal poison. They're actually calling people back to Standing Rock. The whole area is contaminated with a deadly poison. People are sick on deathbeds right now and don't know what's happening because these people are covering it up. So anyway, it's, it's infuriating. But um, Greg, is there anything you want to say about that? Okay. Well, well, absolutely, you're correct. The poison will kill you, all right? That's what they turned this whole zone into was a no-go zone. They don't want anybody coming near it, all right? Now they've got an, uh, from what I understand, they have received an easement that judge just granted. So that basically puts this whole issue into a, a uh, what's adversarial basis, all right? Uh, you know, you know there, there's poison on the ground, people are dying, okay? And so what we have, is no organization in the indigenous uh, uh, population right there. The, the situation is such is that uh, most people are standing around looking to see what's in this for them, okay? So uh, I, and I, from what I understand from my own Native American background, this is the way that these big uh, corporations since the turn of the century even from the 1880s, have always subjugated any Native American uh, issues, and personal rights, uh, warfare. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, it wasn't in the 1880s that they went after the buffalo as a main support, and here they are going after the buffalo again. Okay, I mean they're wiping out eagles. Uh, the dogs that walk on the ground there are getting sick. Okay, so uh, and and to be quite honest, that one. A uh, bit of footage of Lily gave it actually horrified me. What can I say as a doctor? It horrified me. Mm -hmm. You know that woman. It, it, her probably her time on on this earth is probably limited thanks to this poison. All right, the black eyes. You know the pale skin that told me she is bleeding into herself. All right, this hemorrhage uh, that this poison causes. This rosal, this infamous rosal, causes a hemorrhagic. Uh, type uh, destruction of the blood cells, okay? That is about as diabolical as something uh, only a white dominated or organization like this oil company could think of, all right? They don't care if you're dead or you're killed, all right? That's what we have here. So what we need to do and everybody needs to do is stay away from this site, absolutely, and organize, put away these petty greedy differences all right, and organized. That's what you, you've got to do. That's the way uh, that the, the bad old white man has always managed to subjugate the Indian nation, all right, by counting on them to do their dirty work for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to put this thing in a more uh, PC manner, but sorry, we don't have time, folks. This thing, everyone's dying, okay? They're dying, and they want to destroy the water. The water protectors are the real heroes in all of this. They saw what was coming. 
uh, they knew that the Bush family owns all the drinkable, potable riparian rights, okay, to, to uh, most of the water in North America. They love this whole thing about chemical uh, warfare agents killing people. They have made a family fortune, a huge family fortune, off of bad chemicals killing people, millions of people. Don't believe me. Don't believe me at your own peril, all right? Remember, I'm the guy, the agent who went down into a bunker in Iraq and found Bush manufactured, Carlisle manufactured weapons of mass destruction that were, were so lethal, they wouldn't even tell the American public, all right? I'm the only one out here uh, uh, sounding this message. Yes, there were weapons of mass destruction. They were our weapons of mass destruction. And it was the Bush family, the sitting president of the United States who put them there, okay? This is very serious business. And if you think uh, complaining about it and doing nothing is gonna stop these people, guess what? It won't, okay? They've been doing this for several generations. Mm. They're the most lethal family in the world, all right? In every sense of the word. They don't call them the Bush crime family for nothing. Mm. I mean, even organized crime is afraid of these people. All right. The bananas are scared to death of these people. The Gambinos are scared to death of the Bush family. Mm. Okay. So here's the deal is don't go near that site. Do not go near that site. I don't care who says go near that site. Do not go near that site. It's a site of chemical warfare. Do you think that the Dapple people will go near that site? Huh. They know what's going on here. No, if they go near that site, they will be in a respirator uh, chemical suit, hazmat suit, all right? That's what we need to understand here. Do not go there and get organized. Do, do not go to the, the uh, uh, initial exposure site at Standing Rock. Uh, stay away from it and get organized. If you're, if you're, you know, that should tell you, first of all, if your leaders are lawyers, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. Secondly, uh, resist the urge to take money from from all these mysterious sources that's how they're going to compromise you if you start to stand up and do the right thing guess what those books that those little books that go in the back pocket where they made note of your name and the amount of money you took that's all going to come out and you're going to see court injunctions you're going to see lawyers stepping forward and saying well we need to have a hearing on this we need to have some sort of in us uh, um, precedent set here okay they've been setting precedents for since the 1880s folks okay what good have they done we're still at ground zero okay so understand this get get organized stay away from these poison sites and understand nobody's going to give you anything nobody's going to feel sorry for you okay i mean lily went to a hospital you know looking like she was suffering from hemorrhagic fever I saw her. I saw the whole video, and the hospital basically turned her away. Okay, and he and they said, "Go have your friends at Standing Rock give you a hand, help you if you like them so much." Excuse me, this was a hospital in America that said this. I'm sorry. Okay, but you notice no lawyer stepped up to take her case. No. All right. So here's the deal: is uh, go get medical treatment. Anybody that thinks they're exposed, get medical treatment as soon as possible. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, at tonight, okay? At this broadcast, tonight. And then, and then, get the, have the leaders organize, okay? I, you know, divide into four separate groups that support the main order of battle on this thing and do it. I'll, I'm, I'm available. Anybody can call me and ask me how to do it. You know, I've been only doing it for 30 years, okay? So I know how to do it. Uh, I'll, I'll give anybody advice. But knock this, this phony baloney, small-minded stuff off and get together and organize, okay? That's the only way you're going to prevail against some of the most lethal, dangerous people on earth, okay, which are the oil companies, okay? I mean, look at South America. They had no problem killing hundreds of thousands of Indians, hundreds of thousands. So, and they won't hesitate. Just because you're on U.S. soil, they won't hesitate for a second. As far as they're concerned, you're just an irritant standing in the way. So they will stomp on you. And believe me, it's better to, to, to burrow right through, uh, bulldoze your way right through the, the, the uh, 
reservation, which is legally yours, they will bulldoze right through that thing and go all the way to the Gulf, okay, the Gulf of the United States. For what? Just to make money, okay? So, sorry. Any, anybody has any questions, I'm always available you know, to consult. Okay. Yeah. And we'll and we'll talk about that more at the end too because Greg and and I and and Royce Gay, um a spiritual leader, a Lakota Sioux tribal member, um we are putting to, we've put together an uh Sandy Rock Trust it's called and this is a you know a political action committee as well as a donation fundraiser and this is in order to support these water protectors who are now just you know, they have nothing. I mean, there were millions raised in order to help them with lawyer fees and medical and so on. And they were on the front line and now they're just left abandoned. So I've stepped up to, you know, take this initiative with my international foundation and Gregory is supporting. So we, um, you know, we ask people to contact us, people who are there at Standing Rock, they need direction. I, I'm really concerned, Gregory, because there are people flooding back into Standing Rock now. Now, over the past three weeks, like three weeks ago, uh, people went home. They left the camp. There were just uh, a thousand people left at the Oseti Sakowin camp. And what I was told is that that's when you could see who were the infiltrators because they were remaining. And they told me it was a ratio of about um, 800 infiltrators to 200 actual water protectors. So what Gregory's recommendation was, was to identify them and photograph them. Now, I don't think anyone has done that. I tried to get the word out there, but there's no organization. So they have a serious, serious problem with infiltration now. Um, these are DAPL inf paid infiltrators. You know, we're talking hundreds of them at the camp. They're provocateurs. They're going to try to incite riots. Gregory will explain a little bit more about that. But, but um, I just want to, to mention also that not only are people flooding into the camps right now, but this weekend more are going to come in. Um, the spiritual elders have been reporting seeing visions of bloodshed, and, and they're very worried because especially with the granting of the easement to, by, uh, by uh, Trump, and the U.S. government continue to build the pipeline. That means that the police, are, it's basically a green light for them to, to start brutalizing people like they did at the Backwater Bridge incident in November. Um, Gregory, there are a bunch of people there at Stanley Rock. As you said, they should have respirators. And, you know, this, this rosal poison is in the air. And, you know, now the easement was granted and, and the, the police may be using lethal force I mean, they already are, they already have been. I just, real quick, a recap. They've been targeting people at point blank range, in the head, in the groin, with um, the so supposed less than lethal weapons, which kill, and especially with a headshot. They're doing this to elders, they're doing this to children. They have sprayed people with water cannons in sub freezing temperatures, like it is now. And, you know, they like, so, Gregory, please. Okay. One of the things that I'd noticed uh, at watching some of the footage is this. They're not bringing in National Guard like, you know, that used to be famous for being fat pharmacists and real estate agents on the weekends, okay? No, they're bringing in hardcore battle-tested troops from Iraq. And one of the big questions that those troops were asked when they returned, do you have a problem firing on your own people, all right? That should give everybody chills. That's how serious th this problem is, and that's how long ago this whole thing was thought out, okay? Do you have a problem shooting your own people? Obviously, they don't. There they are. They're ready for you to do something violent, so you need not to be confrontational, okay? They don't mind. They will gladly shoot you in the forehead. They will shoot you and a, a mother and a baby that you're carrying. Remember Waco, okay, uh, Texas, remember Ruby Ridge? They didn't hesitate for one second to shoot a mother holding a baby, okay, and a little boy, all right? They didn't hesitate. They won't hesitate with you folks uh, at all. With any of the protesters, the water protectors, they won't hesitate. Secondly, I'm looking at the equipment that they're carrying. All right, this is all brand new equipment, okay? Designed 
for crowd control. In this case, uh, a lot of the vehicles, in fact, all the vehicles that I saw, uh, and this is coming from, what is it, Morton County? Uh, Morton County uh, Sheriff Department. Law enforcement, right. Now, what is, what are, what are, what's Morton County doing with combat uh, IED proofed vehicles. Guess what folks, those all came from Iraq. Those weapons are designed to uh, handle much worse situations than you can throw at them. And in fact, the other day I saw one of the vehicles running over per protesters, all right? Those, weapon, those vehicles are weapons and they're designed to deal with much tougher, much more devoted uh, people like the Iraqis. That's where those weapons, excuse me, that's where those vehicles were designed and engineered to deal with some of the very worst conditions. They will be used on the protesters. They will be used on you without hesitation, all right? This is all, this all goes back to the 9-11 issue, okay? All of a sudden, these little counties like Morton County in, what is it, North Dakota, uh, actually were given hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, to create, to create a militarized police force. They're not, they're not the fat old sheriffs that used to eat donuts and drink coffee all day. No, these guys are serious, all right? And this was pre-planned. All of this was pre-planned pre -planned a long time ago, okay? So what, we, what you have are dangerous people, won't hesitate on you, and the irony is they're U.S. citizens. They're our sons, they're our brothers, all right? They're all relatives but they have been conditioned by warfare, Unconvi unconditioned, uh, excuse me, unconventional, brutal warfare. Believe me, I know I was there, all right? And the government is still trying to repress me and the things that I say to you as a result, okay? So I am the, in fact, I am the only U.S. citizen ever to be forcibly renditioned and forcibly tortured in U.S. history, okay? There's a reason for that. There's a reason why they wanted to shut me up. It's because I know, I know and knew then what they were going to do to US citizens. I'm the perfect example. And if you don't believe me, look at my court case and see what is in store for you, mm -hmm. the protesters, all right? They got away with it once with me, although I'm taking it to the Supreme Court very shortly, but they won't hesitate. The authorities in Morton County won't hesitate to use the same methods on you. So do not co confront these people, okay? It'll be lethal if you do, okay? So stay back, stay away, and whatever you do, get organized. Like I said, I'm more than willing to consult with anybody that wants to organize, okay? Because guess what? The, uh, the people that you're facing in, in, this, in this fight, in this battle, they've already organized. They've already done it in the, in, in the battle environment of a war. They know how to organize and stay with it. They're not going to tolerate you doing the same thing, okay? That would level the, the playing field. So what I'm recommending is you get organized right now. And there's plenty, plenty of people out there that can help you. And I will certainly provide my counsel anybody wanting to know. And Gregory, you gave me a list of um, an order of battle and, on yes, how I to do. be organized. I have a document. So um, it would, all it will take is about 20 people to, to organize themselves. You can do this before the weekend. You can do it real quick and get in touch with me. I'd be happy to send you that document. We're looking for leaders. Um, Gregory will, you know, consult, uh, you know, um, give leadership directive to, to anybody who steps up to, to do these things. And this is all for your protection. That's absolutely correct. And to show you how sensitive what this is, all this is, it's just during this conversation, this show, I've already had an attack on my computer from the NSA. All right. It's got a big message said, don't talk to anybody, basically. All right. This is not for private conversation. Guess what? I've been dealing with this on every public service broadcast I make. They always, always attack me, especially. All right. So there's some, and that means there's validity to what I'm saying. That means there's a pointed sense of need and command here. All right. So 
So I'm more than willing to help anybody that wants to help themselves, but except for the pro provocateurs, okay? Please don't have any provocateurs call because guess what? Already been there, already done it. I'm already government trained. I can spot them a mile away, let alone smell them a mile away, okay? And, and, and Ariana was correct. Yes, they outnumber the legitimate people, okay, that are out there doing this by a factor of four to one. So please, be, understand what you're up against. And there's nothing easy about this battle. This battle is gonna be the toughest thing you'll ever do in your life. But you know, if you, let, if you let them get away with it, guess what, you can give everything else up you have because these people will take it. That's all there is to it. They will take it without the slightest bit of mercy whatsoever. So uh, yeah, thank you so much, Ariana. Okay, for, for allowing me to, to speak about this material. It has to, has to get out there. And very, very few people nowadays are capable of not being cowards, okay? I've never, you know, in these situations, most people are cowards. The cowards right down to their toenails, okay? And only a few will stand up and do what's right when the time comes, only a few. So that's, and the government knows that, I mean, they've been dealing with me, okay? I'm the only, only person who stood up in Iraq and, and did the right thing when it came to torture. But the thing is, in this case, uh, the government wants to make sure uh, that no, no heroes stand up and do what's right. So that's why they have made that whole area a no man's land, a no-go zone, okay? Mm -hmm. The Apple people, when they enter this area, they will be in hazmat suits. Boy, what does that tell you about where our government has gone? Okay, when when U.S. citizens are killed by returning soldiers, okay, U.S. citizens also. All right. So, in a nutshell, there it is. There's no end to this battle. Okay, and and I'm willing to uh, contribute, and so are you, and so uh, is Luca. Okay, and greatly appreciate it, and I greatly understand what's what's at stake here. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, Luca has something to go over. This is just uh, to, to, to give a big picture um, and then we're going to conclude after that and um, give a, a little more information about our fundraising and the support that we're willing to lend to, to Sandy Rock as Greg was just discussing. Uh, well, Greg, Greg was saying hazmat suits and the only thing I, I, I just got a flash of Monsanto because that's what they're doing when they're you know, when they're spraying, they have hazmat suits on. So that should tell you what we're eating. Um, these pipeline companies are no different. Very quickly, um, I'm convinced that these pipelines are designed to fail. And Gregory, if you want to throw something uh, at me after this one, I'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, whistleblowers like John Bolenbaum, uh, Ivan Vokes, as we mentioned uh, in a previous broadcast, they've come out with the fact that, you know, for one, they're building substandard pipelines on purpose uh, with very little or no accountability whatsoever. And these pipeline insurance companies pay them to clean up their spills, so it's actually profitable for them. And it was reported last October 2016 that in the past two years in, in uh, North Dakota alone, there were 292 oil spills, and the media only covered one. Um, also, the, uh, this pipeline is clearly cutting right through unceded Sioux territory under the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty, as the picture that we have clearly shows. Um, from Ed Higgins, um, a fellow investigative journalist, I have to read this to you. Monday, February 6, 2017, the North Dakota House voted in favor of five bills that are uh, specifically men meaning to target water protectors. Um, They've passed the, quote, run protesters over, unquote, bill, the mask bill, and others that turn uh, riot offenses, criminal trespass, and causing a, a business economic harm of $1,000 or more, class C felonies, which means your punishment for that could be up to five years in jail or $10,000 penalties. Uh, and in parentheses, they, they put an emergency clause on these bills so after that day, Monday, they'll go straight to the Senate as opposed to waiting for a crossover, uh, which happens halfway through the legislative session. So these laws could be in effect really soon. So they basically, like you said, Greg, I mean, they're, 
They're officially sanctioning murder in North Dakota. So you guys caught that, that they want to legalize the running over of protesters or water protectors with vehicles. This will not only apply to water protectors, but it's gonna to apply to everyone else in America. So we need to be paying attention 